Hi everybody, welcome to Dram Daddy Whiskey. I'm Dan and tonight we are going to try a rye whiskey that made a lot of waves when it was first introduced a couple years ago. Uh, generally positive, but some mixed reviews. So I'm excited to give it a try tonight. We're talking about Barrel Seagrass. Barrel Seagrass is put out by Barrel Craft Spirits and Barrel Craft Spirits is a non-distilling producer, meaning that they don't make their own whiskey. Instead, they source it from other producers, other distilleries, and they blend it to get it at just the right mix to make it something that's greater than the sum of its parts. Today, there are so many different non-distilling producers that just take a whiskey from one place, slap a new label on it, call it their own, and mark it up a ridiculous amount so they can still make a profit from it. Barrel is one of the few non-distilling producers, in my opinion, that really does create whiskey that's greater than the sum of its parts. They do a really, really good job, uh, particularly in their evergreen line, in their, their standard lineup. And seagrass is a part of that standard lineup. So you should be able to go into a store at any time in the year, at least a liquor store, probably not in a grocery store, uh, and find a bottle of this if you wanted to try it. It's pretty accessible. In addition to seagrass, they have ongoing bourbon batches that they release. You gotta pay attention to the batch number on those because they vary greatly. They're usually all pretty good though. And then they've got a bunch of whiskeys that are kind of odd blends or whiskeys that are, are blended and then finished in an odd way. They've got the Dovetail, the Armida, the Vantage, which just came out, which is focused on different uh, types of wood and finishing in different types of oak. But then we've got the Seagrass, which is a blend of American and Canadian whiskeys that is finished, rye whiskeys, that are finished in Martinique rum, Madeira, and apricot brandy barrels. So kind of a funky mix. Uh, the American rye whiskeys in this are distilled in Kentucky, Indiana, and Tennessee. And it is bottled cask strength at 118.22 proof for 59.11 alcohol by volume. Let's give it a nose, give it a taste. People seem to either absolutely love it or it just wasn't their thing. Like they recognize that, hey, it might be cool what it's doing, but it's not something that they in particular were partial to. I've had it once, I seem to fall in the former camp, but let's try it again to see, see what we think here. On the nose, the rye is pretty light, but it's still there and it's buttressed by some really candy sweetness. It's a little muted at first, but the more I, I smell it, the more I'm picking up on the brandy, I think, in particular. The rum might be coming through too, but it's really that, that brandy that is really punching through pretty strong once you get past the rye notes, which again are a little bit muted, but, but yeah, that brandy really kicks through and it smells really good. Delicious and sweet. Um, this smells like it'll be uh, pretty oily, pretty viscous. A little bit of spice there too. I don't know if that's the oak, probably the rye spice actually coming through again on the back. So this kind of dances back and forth between rye notes, like muted rye notes for me, and then the brandy sweetness, and then the spice from the rye really comes in and, and kicks it up again. Wonderful nose, really complex. Uh, I could probably keep sniffing this for the next 15 minutes and it would keep changing on me, but uh, let's give it a taste. Mm, it's really tasty, almost syrupy up front, and then immediately develops into a kick like an explosion of rye spice in the back. Finish seems a little bit muted right now. Let's go for it again. One thing I'm noticing is on the palate, the first time around, it was mainly the, uh, the influence of the finishing barrels that I noticed the most. Different types of sweetness and some fruit. There was a distinct fruitiness, but this time around, the rye spice is really standing out more than I thought it would. And there we are with those brandy notes. Oh, the rum too. It's almost like you added rye spice to a Hawaiian punch. I don't know if you had those, I don't know if that's still around. When I was a kid, Hawaiian punch was the jam, but it's, it's almost like a Hawaiian punchy sort of whiskey. And the more I drink this, the more that fruitiness and that brandy becomes present throughout, especially on the front palate, but once you get past the spice, maybe that was a little bit of the ethanol burn, it really sticks out on the palate. And then the finish, that rye spice comes through more. It's a little bit more drying than it was on the palate. Yeah, and you do get more of the rye spice on the finish, but on the palate development, front to back, 
you are getting that brandy, that rum, and I, the Madeira is harder for me to pick out. I'm not getting a clear wine influence, but the brandy and the rum in particular, they really do stand out and they really do give this kind of a tropical punch. I remember the first time I had this, it changed a lot as I drank it. It's certainly changing a lot as I drink it now. And again, I could probably sit and chew on this, have another pour for like a half hour and just spit out all these different notes. But that's one thing that seems to be pretty consistent is change. The development on this, the way you pick up different notes, the more that you drink it, when your palate gets used to one sort of notes, you start to pick up the other and then it happens again with, with different notes. For anyone who's really into whiskey appreciation, I can't imagine that's a bad thing. Having that kind of complexity, that kind of development, being able to have a whiskey that's so interesting because you pick up on all these different notes, that's just fantastic. And that's really what I have to say about this whiskey. It is, it's absolutely great. Bordering on fantastic. The grade I'm gonna give this, this is a tough one, 9.0. I really enjoy this whiskey. I definitely fall into the camp of folks who are not put off by it. I don't think it's too sweet. I think it's really cool what it is and I think it's very unique as well. If you've had it, let us know in the comments. If you like the review, please give it a like. Please subscribe if you like the videos I've been making. And until next time, cheers.